Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about vector spaces, subspaces, conditions for uh, a subset of a vector space to be a subspace, few problems on subspaces and also prove a theorem where we'll show that intersection of two subspace is also a subspace. So this is going to be the outline of this lecture. So before we start with vector spaces, we need to talk about two kinds of mappings. Okay, the first one uh, I would like to talk about is uh, external composition. So, first we need to have the idea of what is an external composition. Suppose I have a function which is taking me from the set A cross B to the set B again. Okay, that means if I take an element from here which is small a and if I take an element from here which is small b, so basically I'm taking the Cartesian a comma b and that is getting mapped to some element let's say small c of the set b. Then this kind of a composition is called external composition. We need to do one more mapping here which is binary composition. So what is binary composition? Let's say I have a function g which is taking me from the set a cross a to the set a again. Okay, so it's almost like uh, everything is closed inside the set a. You're taking elements from the set a. Suppose I'm taking an element a from here, I'm taking an element b from here. So the Cartesian a comma b, that's going to be mapped to some element C which also has to belong to the same set A. So nothing is going outside the set A. So this kind of a composition is called binary composition and this kind of a composition is called external composition. Now we will need the help of these two compositions to define a vector space. Let's say I have a set V which is a set of vectors and I am defining a binary composition on the set V by the symbol in this manner and I am defining an external composition from the set F cross V to the set V defined by this composition. Okay, so I am I have taken a non-empty set of uh, vectors which is V. On the set V I have taken a binary that means from V cross V to V the binary operation is working and I have taken an external composition which is represented by this symbol which is taking me from F cross V to V where F is the set which we are going to call as field. Okay, that means essentially all the constants are going to be there in that set F. So if this kind of a set where we have taken two uh, defined two compositions on the set V based on binary and external composition, this combination is going to be called a vector space if the binary and the external composition satisfies a total of 10 properties. Okay, so now we'll go into the 10 properties which if satisfied by these two compositions with respect to the V set and the field, then only the V set with respect to these two compositions are going to be called vector space. So let's take a look into the 10 properties. So here you can see I have mentioned that V it is a non-empty set and this plus symbol is a binary composition on V and in the field we have normal addition and multiplication. So in the F which is the field we have dot to be the external composition which is expressed in this manner uh, external composition of F with V that means F cross V to V then V is said to be a vector space if all these 10 properties are satisfied. Okay, so let's take a little look into the 10 properties. I will not go into the details of all the properties. You can check that property number 1 to 4. Okay, property 1 to 4, this is nothing but the properties of group. Okay, now what do I mean by that? You can observe that this is the closure property. That means I have taken 
uh, a composition alpha composition beta where alpha and beta from are taken from the set v and that composition also is belonging to the set v so that means it's a closure property here you can see number two is nothing but associative property then we have number three which is telling me that an element theta will belong to v such that alpha when binarily composed with theta will give me again alpha so that means basically it's uh, guaranteeing the existence of the identity element okay so existence of identity and in number four i have if alpha belongs to v then minus alpha also belongs to v such that alpha when composed with minus alpha that will give me the element theta so this is basically telling me that for every alpha there will exist the inverse element of alpha so that if i compose them i'll get the identity element back so this is guaranteeing me the existence of inverse of every element of the v set so basically these four if you can recollect from group theory these four properties are nothing but the properties of group if any set v satisfies these four properties then we are going to say from these four properties we can say that v with respect to the binary is a group okay Achha, now let's extend our observation a little bit more if i go into rule number five okay you can see rule number five is simply commutative property so rule number five is commutative property i am taking the uh, elements alpha plus beta then again beta plus alpha and if both are same then that means it's a commutative property so now if i join one and five all the first five properties if i take them then i can say together v with respect to the binary plus is a commutative group okay so for a set to be a vector space first of all it has to be a commutative group with respect to the binary operation so that's the first thing after that we have five more properties okay so number six is it is kind of an independent property okay so nothing is associated with number six it has to occur separately where it is telling me that if i take an element from the field and externally compose it with an element alpha then that uh, composition uh, the answer that i will get from there that will also belong to the v set that means the vector space set okay so six has to be satisfied independently now again if i come to number seven to number ten okay these four properties where you can see these are basically the distributive properties with respect to the elements of the field and the elements of the v set okay these four properties have a special um, characteristics we call them hereditary properties okay now what is the meaning of hereditary property it means that if i have a set capital a it doesn't have to be a vector space nothing just a set capital a and if i take another subset inside it okay i've taken another subset inside it let's call it the set b so you can see that b is a subset of a b is a subset of a if in the set a these four properties are satisfied that means if in a the properties 7 to 10 if they are sa uh, satisfying in the set a then automatically they will satisfy in the set b also that means if i take any subset in that subset those four properties will automatically come in and hence they are called the hereditary properties okay so quickly we can recap so we have uh, 10 properties for which we can define a vector space uh, as you can see the first five properties are nothing but the properties of a commutative group the sixth property is an independent one and the seven to ten the remaining four properties are hereditary properties okay so now we will move on to subspace okay so these 
10 conditions they can be squeezed up when we are forming a subspace let's take a look into that so now coming to what is a subspace okay suppose i have again i'll explain with the example of a set i have a set a okay just simply a set and i have a subset okay i have a subset b now imagine if somehow a is a vector space if a turns out to be a vector space with respect to some binary and external composition over a over some field f okay if a is a vector space i have taken b which is simply a subset okay now if b if the set b also turns out to be a vector space okay that means those 10 properties turns out to be satisfied in the set b also then i will say that b is a subspace of capital a okay so if a subset satisfies the properties of vector space subset of a vector space obviously satisfies the properties of a vector space then that subset is called the subspace of the bigger vector space okay so now as you can see if i have to prove a set is a subspace of some vector space then obviously that set has to be independently a vector space that means all the 10 properties 1 to 10 have to be satisfied for that set b but that is not the case we will see that when we are trying to show something is a vector space instead of showing all the 10 properties it is just enough to show only two of them if these two are satisfied then automatically we can say that any subset will of a vector space will form a subspace okay so now uh, let's clear a few technical things here from now on this operation we will simply write as plus and this operation we will simply write as multiplication that means uh, if i have uh, alpha c composed uh, externally with alpha instead of writing this from now on we will simply write c alpha and if i have um, uh, alpha uh, binary beta from now on we will simply write alpha plus beta okay so just in order to avoid inconvenience from now on we are going to represent in this manner okay uh, so you can see that it's saying a non-empty subset w of a vector space v over a field f that will be a subspace it's an if and only if criteria if and only if these two properties are satisfied okay now you can see this property number one is nothing but the first property over here okay the first property was saying alpha plus beta also has to belong to that set so you can see alpha plus beta is belonging to that set so this is basically property number one of vector space okay now number two if you observe carefully c into alpha belongs to w this is property number six where you can see we have c into alpha belongs to that set for any c taken from the field and alpha taken from the vector space okay so this is also c into alpha belongs to w so this is basically property number six and this is basically property number one so instead of showing all the 10 properties okay instead of showing all the 10 properties if i show property one and six is satisfied automatically all the 10 properties will be satisfied now let's see how that happens okay so since this is an if and only if proof so first we will start by saying that let w uh, is some uh, let w is a sub non obviously a non empty subset uh, a non empty subset of v uh, with one property uh, roman 1 and property roman 2 uh, or i would say where property 1 and 2 are satisfied okay so initially i am considering that these two properties are satisfied and now i'll try to prove that w is a vector space okay so how we can do that if you observe very carefully the first property the first property is telling me that whenever i'm taking two elements from the w set their addition is also belonging to the w set okay so now we know that 
माइनस वन बिलोंग्स टू फील्ड बिकॉज फील्ड कंसिस्ट ऑफ ऑल द पॉसिबल कॉन्स्टेंट्स माइनस वन इज डेफिनेटली अ कॉन्स्टेंट सो माइनस वन इज गोइंग टू बिलोंग टू फील्ड ओके अच्छा एंड आई एम कंसिडरिंग लेट बीटा बिलोंग्स टू डब्ल्यू ओके बिकॉज इट्स ऑलरेडी गिवन टू मी आल्फा बीटा देर आर एलिमेंट्स लाइक दैट बिलोंग टू डब्ल्यू सो आई एम टेकिंग बीटा बिलोंग्स टू डब्ल्यू अच्छा वन मोर थिंग ऑब्जर्व इन प्रॉपर्टी नंबर टू इट्स टेलिंग मी इफ आई टेक वन एलिमेंट फ्रॉम द डब्ल्यू सेट एंड वन एलिमेंट फ्रॉम द फील्ड सेट देन द प्रोडक्ट इज गोइंग टू बिलोंग टू द डब्ल्यू सेट सो आई टेकन वन एलिमेंट फ्रॉम द फील्ड सेट वन एलिमेंट फ्रॉम द डब्ल्यू सेट सो देर प्रोडक्ट हैज टू बिलोंग टू द डब्ल्यू सेट एज पर प्रॉपर्टी नंबर रोमन टू सो आई कैन से दैट बाई प्रॉपर्टी नंबर टू विच इज गिवेन टू मी माइनस वन टाइम्स बीटा हैज टू बिलोंग टू W. That means minus beta belongs to W. So the conclusion that I have, if beta belongs to W, then minus of beta also belongs to W. Now, what is minus of beta? If you go back to this thing that I was talking about, if alpha belongs to V, there exists minus alpha belongs to V. And what was this property? This was the existence of inverse. So that means we can see that the inverse property is automatically being satisfied. That means property number four has just turned up over here. Okay, so automatically we have got property number four. Okay, although we won't mention that, but this is just an observation. Okay, now if I again take the help of property number one, now I can say that uh, we have alpha belongs to W and also i have already got that minus beta belongs to w so then by property number 1 see what can i say with property number 1 if i take two elements from the w set their addition has to belong to the w set so i've taken one element alpha and one element minus beta so that means that addition has to belong to the w set so that implies alpha plus of minus beta has to belong to the w set as per property 1 so that gives me alpha minus beta belongs to the w set okay so now comes in a very much interesting property of group theory okay and if you don't remember that you need to refer to that from any textbook or any uh, other source i'll just help you to recollect it okay if you don't remember if okay so i'll just draw a line here and i'll continue later on or maybe i'll do one thing i'll just go down and i'll just explain and then come back um remember that if g with respect to some composition if this is a group okay g with respect to some binary if that's a group then uh if i take let s be a subset of g okay so i've taken a small subset of g so basically i have g like this and i have taken an s set like this this s will be a subgroup okay this was a theorem that s is a subgroup and subgroup meaning the same like subspace that that means s will be independently a group s is a subgroup if and only if if you remember the condition was something like this alpha star uh, beta inverse belongs to s for all alpha comma beta belongs to s that means whenever i take two elements one is alpha and one is beta from the set s alpha composed with beta inverse if that also belongs to the set s then we used to say that s is a subgroup of g okay this was a very important property in group theory now let's do a little bit extension of this now if the external composition is simple addition okay if the external composition is simple addition that means if my group is g defined with respect to normal addition then inverse of any element how do we write that inverse of an element with respect to addition is nothing but minus of that element okay which i was telling you in property number 4 that inverse of an element is basically minus of that element if the binary composition is addition it's just like if the binary composition is normal multiplication then inverse of an element is nothing but the reciprocal of that element and so on okay so you people must know all these things so uh the main thing that i wanted to say that for something to be a subgroup 
this property has to be satisfied and this property it comes down to something like alpha plus of minus beta belongs to s because just now i told you inverse is nothing but minus of that element if the composition is plus so instead of beta inverse i have taken minus beta so that means alpha minus beta belongs to s okay so the conclusion that i have here is with respect to addition if g is a group then s will be a subgroup if this thing is happening the subtraction of two elements where the two elements are taken from s set and if their subtraction also belongs to that particular set then we say that set is a subgroup of the g set okay so now i will use this property back here okay so back here i have got that similar kind of thing i have taken alpha from w minus beta from w and i have got the subtraction of those two is also belonging to w so that means just from the theory that i told you from here i can make a conclusion that w is a subgroup of v right so w is a subgroup now subgroup means what subgroup means automatically the uh, properties of group are coming in over here okay so that means this implies w is a group uh with respect to uh, the binary composition as plus right so if w is a group so now just now i told you remember if something is a group then property 1 to 4 is automatically coming to your hand that means if v comma plus is a group that means you have from property 1 and 4 okay so w is a sub group this means we have got property number 1 to property number 4 is already satisfied the moment i am able to write this okay acha so now let's move on from here we have to prove all the 10 properties somehow we have to show all the 10 properties okay now if you remember we have another theory sorry we have another theory in subgroup in the group actually if g is a group okay with respect to whatever composition you take and s is a subgroup okay now if you just remember that if this g if it is commutative then its subgroup will be also commutative 100% okay so this was a very important theory in groups where if the gr main group is commutative then it's any subgroup whatever subgroup you take it's also going to be commutative so again this property i will need over here i am working with w which is right now a subgroup okay and what is my vector space my vector space here is called as my vector space is v so in vector space all the 10 properties are there that means the commutative property is already there in v right the commutative property is already there over here so i already know that v is commutative with respect to addition and since w is a sub a subset or a subgroup which i have already shown w is a subgroup which i have already shown so that means w is also commutative with respect to plus so that means property number 5 now we have got if you can recollect this was property number 5 which was the commutative property okay so if now i have got property number 1 to 4 and as well as 5 so if i combine 1 to 5 i have got that w is a commutative group this much i have got now i need the remaining five properties okay if you remember it was told in the statement of the theorem that property number 2 was given to us okay and property number 2 was nothing but property number 6 okay which i told you before so now i have property number 6 also that is simply given in the statement of the question okay So what are the properties I have got now? So property number one to four is done over here. Property number five is done over here. 
property number 6 is given in the statement of the question. So basically property number 1 to 6 I have already shown that it is existing in the W set. So what are the remaining properties right now? 7 to 10. Now again recollect I told you that property number 7 to 10 what kind of properties are they? They are hereditary properties. That means the moment I take a subset, if you remember here I told you, the moment I take a subset, the property number 7 to 10 automatically go inside the subset. Okay. So if I come back here, uh, property number 7 to property number 10, this will automatically be satisfied in W since they are hereditary properties okay because these properties we already have in the set v and since w is a subset of v so automatically the hereditary properties are coming in so as you can see property 1 to property 10 is satisfied in the w set so therefore we can conclude that therefore w forms a vector space okay and the moment w forms a vector space since it was a subset of v so i can say that w is a subspace of v okay and hence the first part of the proof is done okay since you remember this was an if and only if criteria so we have to show that it is happening both ways so one of the way i have shown actually the other way it's too trivial there is nothing to show that means in the first case i had considered that w is non empty subset where property 1 and 2 are satisfied now if i use the other part of if and only if criteria then i need to cons first i need to consider that if w is a subspace then these two things are happening okay so if w is a subspace that means w is a vector space if w is a vector space then all the 10 properties are there in w if all the 10 properties are there in w then obviously property 6 and property 1 is there in w okay so if w is a subspace it is a vector space if it is a vector space all the 10 properties are there if all the 10 properties are there then property 6 is also there and property 1 is also there which is just the statement of the question so automatically if w is a subspace so property 1 and property 6 will be definitely satisfied so it's a very trivial thing and there is nothing to prove here okay so basically we have shown the if and only if criteria for a subset of a vector space to be a subspace okay so now just let's focus on these two properties these two properties will be very essential for us while we are going to do the problems okay next we are going to go into a few practice problems where we will take two subsets and show that they are forming a vector space or not okay so just remember the addition has to belong to that set multiplication with a constant taken from the field also has to belong to the set simply these two are the criteria okay so let's take a look at this problem in this problem uh, we can see that r3 is the uh, vector space given to us that means the set of all three dimensional real coordinates okay all real numbers forming a set of three dimensional coordinates which is defined by something like this w is defined by all those three dimensional coordinates such that the x coordinate and the y coordinate is strictly zero okay so you can understand so if i have r3 like this which is the set of all three dimensional coordinates uh, made with real numbers i have taken w where we are going to have coordinates something like 0, 0, z kind of coordinates where x and y are strictly 0 and we have no restriction on the z coordinate. Okay. So I need to show that w is forming a subspace of the vector space R3. Okay. So just now we have done the theorem for something to be a subspace we need to show two properties addition of two elements taken from here has to belong to w product with scalar uh, taken from the field and multiplied with an element of w also has to belong to w okay so let's just verify whether those things are happening or not so initially let me take two elements from w let um, uh, alpha and beta belong to w okay 
So I've taken two elements of W. Now let me specify whenever I take elements from W, how does it have to look like where the x coordinate and y coordinate has to be zero. So I'm focusing on the elements now. So that means alpha will be looking something like zero comma zero comma some z coordinate value. Let's say that is a and beta is zero comma zero comma some z coordinate value let's say b where obviously a is taken from since i was saying that all the elements are real numbers here so a is taken from real number and b is taking from real number okay so first of all i need to show property number one where addition of these two has to belong to w again so i'm taking the addition of these two i will have 0 0 alpha plus 0 0 0 0 sorry a not alpha 0 0 a plus 0 0 b and that will be 0 0 a plus b now you can just verify that this kind of an element where the x coordinate is 0 y coordinate is 0 and the z coordinate is some real number because a is real number b is real number so this means a plus b is also a real number and this simply satisfies the structure of the set w okay so i can automatically say that the alpha plus beta element that I've got that belongs to W. Okay, so the first property of subspace is satisfied. Okay, now I'm moving on to the second one where I will take a element from the field, multiply with an element of W and show whether it is existing in W or not. Okay, Achha. so coming to property number two, I'm taking an element let uh, C belongs to field. Now instead of writing F as field, here you can see we are working with all real numbers okay no complex numbers or things like that only strictly real numbers so instead of writing a generalized field f here in this case we are going to write r as the field the set of all real numbers as the field okay so let uh, c be some value taken from r and alpha belongs to w so my target is to show c into alpha also belongs to w so I'm taking C alpha and that would be alpha is uh, looking like 0, 0, A. So if I multiply, I'll have 0, 0, C, A. If A is a re real number and C is a real number as well, so that means here I can say that C into alpha is also a real number. And again, you can see this satisfies the construction of the W set, X coordinate 0, Y coordinate 0, Z coordinate is some real number. So automatically I can say that C into alpha belongs to the set W. So this is property number two and this was property number one. So the two properties of subspace have been satisfied. So I can say that therefore W forms a subspace of R3. Okay. So the problem is done. It's that simple. Let's take a look at another question. Now imagine that it's a similar kind of question. I have R3 as the vector space. S is some subset of R3. And now the S set is defined in a little bit different manner than the previous one. So again, the question is now it's asking, does it form a subspace? So it may or may not form a subspace. So if you, by looking at the sum, if you don't understand whether it is a subspace or not, the best thing is, first of all, try to prove these two properties. If you are getting stuck somewhere and if you are unable to prove, and if you feel like it's not forming a subspace, then try to come up with a counter example where you can just disprove any one of these two statements. Okay, so let's see what happens here. First of all, imagine I don't know whether this is going to be a subspace or not. So I am just simply trying to prove and let me see if I'm able to do that or not. And if not, then I will come up with counter example. So first of all, let me take two elements from here. Let alpha comma beta belongs to S. So then alpha would look, if I take alpha as uh, A1, A2, A3, then as per the structure of the S set, the uh, square of X coordinate plus the square of Y coordinate has to be same as the square of Z coordinate. So that means here I should have a1 square plus a2 square must be equals to a3 square. And similarly, if I define beta as b1, b2, b3, then the property would be b1 square plus b2 square equals to b3 square. Okay, so these are the two things that I have. Now I'm taking 
the sum of alpha and beta which I want to show belongs to S. So if I take the sum A1 plus B1, A2 plus B2 and A3 plus B3. So directly you can see I have just taken the sum of the coordinates. Okay. And if this has to belong to S, then square of this one plus square of this one has to be equal to square of the Z coordinate. That means I need to verify whether A1 plus B1 square plus A2 plus B2 square, whether that is equals to A3 plus B3 square or not. This is something that I have to verify. And how will I verify with the help of these two statements? Okay, if someone has provided us these two information, then does it imply that this will also happen? Okay, you can see that algebraically you cannot prove. If these two are given to you from these two lines, you can never come up with this one. So that means there is some misconnection mis here, which is happening between the given relation and the one that I need to prove. So now you can think that maybe this is that means maybe this is not happening. Okay, because the information I cannot connect it with the one that I need to prove. So then I will try to come up with a counter example to disprove that this is not a subspace. Okay, so let's try some counter examples here. So just before starting the problem, even before starting the problem, if you understand that it's not going to be a subspace, then basically you don't need to do any of this calculation. Okay, this is irrelevant to you. You also don't need to do all these things. If you know it's not being a subspace. Okay, if you don't know, then it's fine. You're just trying. But if you know, then no need to do this. You can directly come to the part that I'm going to do now. Let's take some element from alpha and beta from the set S. Okay, now I'm taking some specific elements. Okay, let's say I'm saying alpha equals to just remember if alpha is x, y, z, then it has to satisfy the property x square plus y square equal to z square. This property has to be satisfied the moment I'm taking it from the S set. So can I take alpha something like this? Minus 3, 4, 5. You can just check minus 3 square plus 4 square is obviously equals to 5 square. So that's satisfying so that means this is an element of s and no problem in our consideration similarly if i take beta as i'm just interchanging the position of the minus sign so automatically i'll get a new element okay let's say this is my beta so again you can verify that 3 square plus of minus 4 square that is equals to 5 square so that's also fine so i've taken alpha and beta in this manner now if I take the addition of these two, okay, the addition you can see minus 3 plus 3 is 0, 4 minus 4 is 0 and 5 plus 5 is 10. Now the question is, will 0 square plus 0 square be equal to 10 square? Obviously not. So 0 square plus 0 square is not equal to 10 square. So this is not happening. So that means this element is not belonging to the S set. So I have taken two elements from S and their addition is not belonging to S. So what can I say? That therefore, S is not a subspace of V. Sorry, it was not V here, it was R3. Right? So this is the method of counter example. Always remember one thing, people make a mistake here that sometimes students use this method to prove that something is a uh, subspace or people take two examples and show that their addition is also belonging to that set. That's not a way of doing. If you try to show something is a subspace, you have to go by this method, which is the generalized one. Okay, you cannot take examples to prove something. You can take examples to disprove something. Okay, so that's a very important deal here. So this is about this problem. And finally, let's come to another uh, observation about subspaces. Here it is saying that intersection of two subspaces will also be a subspace of V. So if I have two subspaces, if I take the intersection, that is also going to be a subspace. Okay. So if I draw, try to draw the diagram here, let's say V is the vector space. Okay. And I have two subspaces. Let's say W1 is a subspace and W2 is a subspace. So these W1 and W2 are subspaces. So I'll just write them so that you can refer to the picture later on while doing the theorem. 
W1 and W2 are subspaces, V is a vector space, okay. Then I need to prove that this region, which is the intersection of W1 and W2, this region is also a subspace. We need to prove this, okay. That's something we need to prove, okay. Now you can just recollect how are we proving these kind of things. That means something will be a subspace if that Roman 1 property which is alpha plus beta belongs to the set here. This set is represented by W1 intersection W2. The addition of the two elements has to belong to that set and C into some element taken from there also has to belong to that set. So in order to show that this intersection region is a subspace we need to show those two properties of subspace okay so this is our target Achha. now in order to prove this two first of all it is not necessary that always i'll get two elements from this region okay you can imagine that the picture may have looked something like this also this was my v this is my w1 this is my w2 and in the intersection i have just one element theta okay now you you might say that sir why not this is happening why not uh, the interest there is no intersection between the two subspaces okay why not no intersection why not this case is possible if this case happens imagine if theta is here now what was theta again theta if you just recollect from uh, the 10 conditions that we had written theta was the identity element right theta was I, I told you it was the existence of identity so theta is the identity element now if I say that theta belongs to w1 then automatically theta does not belong to this set if theta is belong to w1 so if the identity does not belong to w2 then that property will not be satisfied in w2 that means w2 will not be a vector space and hence obviously it will not be a subspace as per the given statement okay so this scenario is not going to occur so the worst possibility is the intersection will contain only the theta element and nothing else and the other possibility is it will contain theta as well as many other elements okay so i have to prove this theorem in two parts so first of all i am coming to part one so part one is where i am considering or i would say case one where i am considering that let the intersection contains only the element theta which is this diagram that I've done, drawn, okay? Now, this is something you need to remember that if a subset of a vector space, if it contains only the identity element, okay, if something contains only the identity element, we call that to be a trivial vector space, okay? So here W1 intersection W2 is a vector space and we usually call that a trivial vector space so any uh, set which contains only the identity we call that a trivial vector space so since w1 intersection w2 is forming a subspace so hence it will be a subspace okay so the first case is done now coming to this one the second case the one that we are actually interested in okay so now coming to case 2 Here I'm considering that let W1, let um, alpha comma beta belongs to W1 intersection W2. So now more than one element is existing, okay, other than the identity others are also existing. So I'm considering one element alpha, one element beta taken from that intersection region, okay. So this is just set theory, normal set theory, if, if alpha belongs to W1 intersection W2, then I can say that alpha belongs to W1 and alpha belongs to W2 also. Similarly, beta belongs to W1 intersection W2. I can say beta belongs to W1 and beta belongs to W2. Okay, simple set theory. Now again, look at the figure here. It was told that W1 is a subspace, W2 is a subspace. So those two are subspaces. Okay, so if W1 is a subspace, and W2 is a subspace. Now see, alpha belongs to W1, beta also belongs to W1 and we know that W1 is a subspace. So if W1 is a subspace, from here I can say that alpha comma beta both are belonging to W1. So this would imply 
that their addition also belongs to W1. This is the first property of subspace. Since W1 is a subspace, so this property has to be satisfied. And also at the same time, from this one and this one, I can say that alpha comma beta belongs to W2. So this would imply alpha plus beta belongs to W2. Why are these two happening? Because W1 and W2 are subspaces already given to us. Okay. So since W1 is a subspace and here also I can say since W2 is a subspace. Okay. So I have alpha plus beta belonging to W1, alpha plus beta belonging to W2. So again from these two information, I can say that alpha plus beta belong since alpha plus beta is belonging to w1 also and w2 also so obviously it will belong to the intersection of w1 and w2 okay so i have alpha plus beta belonging to w1 intersection w2 and let me call this roman 1 and now you can just recollect that this is one of the property that i was trying to show okay for w1 intersection w2 to be a subspace i wanted to show that the addition of two elements will belong to that and i have already shown that here so now the remaining part I need to show that C into alpha also belongs to W1 intersection W2. So again that will be a similar approach, completely similar approach. So again I will consider that let C belongs to the field, any randomly chosen uh, scalar and uh, alpha belongs to W1 uh, intersection W2. Okay. So that means alpha belongs to W1 and alpha belongs to w2 i can just improve this statement and say alpha belongs to w1 and i have taken c belongs to f so i'll just include that and the other part i'll write alpha belongs to w2 and again the same repetition c belongs to f and c belongs to f now again if you can remember that w1 was a subspace given to us so as per the second property of subspace i can say that product of c and alpha must be belonging to w1 since w1 is a subspace and similarly over here c into alpha belongs to w2 since w2 is a subspace okay so if i combine these two again you can see c alpha belongs to w1 also it belongs to w2 also so automatically i can say c alpha belongs to intersection of w1 and w2 which i'm going to call as roman 2 and so Roman 1 and Roman 2 are forming the two properties of subspace. So I can say from 1 and 2 intersection of two subspaces forms a subspace. Okay. And that was our required proof. So now I have a simple question. Try to think and tell me will the union of two subspaces if i take w1 as a subspace and w2 as a subspace independently i just showed that intersection forms a subspace will the union also form a subspace will it always form a subspace or is there any restriction okay this is a question to you so you people please let me know in the comments whether union will form a subspace or not if yes then give me the reason why if no then give me some example why not Alright, so see you in the next video. Thank you.